with the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund, and we're standing here in uh, Joel Sullivan's Polyface Farm pasture, and uh, with his great cows in the background. And uh, we want to talk about HR 875 and some of the other legislation that's coming down the pike that we're really concerned about. And go ahead, Joel. Well, one of the biggest issues we've got right now in this whole clean food movement is how do we address these big food safety issues, recalls, peanut, uh, peanut problems, pathogen problems, foodborne illness, and this perception that the government's just doing, not doing enough to protect us. So we need more, you know, regulation. We need more oversight. Uh, our problem is that, that, uh, that industry is just not being regulated hard enough. And, um, and so what we've got is HR uh, 875. We've got, you know, um, th this idea that what we really need is to have a new overarching big federal uh, food agency uh, to do food safety and be a food police. And, um, and of course, embedded in that is mandatory national animal identification system, which is, of course, mandatory uh, identification device chip embedded in every chicken, every cow, or unless you go for Tyson, when, where you only need one for a 15,000 bird house because it's all in and all out. But if you're, if you're us, then you need one for every single chicken, and you need to keep the data current, and you need to, it needs to be able to be audited within 24 hours, and you have to have a computer in order to register, and you have to embed these microchips, and and you have to uh, how are you going to get them out uh, when you uh, uh, kill the animals so that you don't eat microchips? <laughs> uh, that's a big problem in Canada right now, where they have some microchipping of uh, beef cattle only, not chicken. Uh, no country has ever even thought about trying to have this as over marching as the U.S. It's, 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 a, it's a totally ridiculous scheme and what it will do, of course, will we'll give a pretty free pass to the industrial food system because of the scalability of the, of the infrastructure and it will essentially criminalize all, uh, criminalize and, and de-economize um, local and small scale producers. So, uh, you know, it, it, this, is a, this is a death knell. Uh, and as far as food safety is concerned, again, you're dealing with a very subjective thing. You know, by what writ of, of uh, the pontiff has it been determined that, uh, you know, the pontiff being, in our case, the U.S. duh, uh, you know, by what extreme notion has it been decided that it's perfectly safe to feed your kids uh, Cocoa Puffs, Twinkies, and Mountain Dew, but it's not safe to feed them compost-grown tomatoes and raw milk. I mean, this food safety is a very subjective thing, and, and boy, I mean, if there's one, if there's one thing that, that, that um, stands between uh, personal freedom and tyranny, it's, it's the choice of being able to decide what to feed our own bodies. I mean, if that isn't the most uh, basic human freedom, I don't know what is. And so, once we turn over the decision-making power to determine what we're going to eat to a government agency, it will absolutely be limited to whatever industrial food can, can produce because that's the fraternity that the government and the agencies operate in. So the answer is not some big, you know, new regulatory agency. The answer is to is to force the industry to compete with viable, economically viable, and transparent viable local food commerce. Right now, the industrial food system, that the, co the, co the competition is not fair because the regulations, which are not scalable, put an undue prejudicial burden on small-scale producers. The day we allow small-scale local producers to, um, to enjoy an exemption from these onerous regulations, because the relationships of the marketing venue are just as good a police power as the bureaucracy in the industrial, we will then make the industrial compete with us and we will run them out of business. Um, so the answer is not a top-down answer, it's a bottom-up answer. And really, all great revolutions, you know, the Boston Tea Party and forward, all happen, start on the ground, and they're grassroots, they come up with the